Previously, I demonstrated how to phase align two synchronized SR542 optical choppers to achieve digital control of duty factor in an optical chopper experiment. To do so, we monitored the photodiode output on an oscilloscope. However, you may not have access to an oscilloscope, or your signal-to-noise ratio may be too poor to directly visualize the rectangular waveform on a scope. In that case, you may be monitoring your signal with a lock-in amplifier like this SR860. Luckily, the phase alignment procedure is still straightforward, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. Recall the experimental setup from last time. I've connected the outer slots reference output of chopper 1 to channel 1 of the oscilloscope, and I'm triggering the scope on its rising edges. I'm monitoring the photodiode output on channel 4 of the oscilloscope. I've added an ND30 filter to my optical table setup to simulate a weak signal, but I'm cheating a bit for now and haven't yet switched it into the beam path. So for now, the photodiode output represents the unattenuated laser power. Right now, I'm running only chopper 1, as you can see. Before I switch the filter in, the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the singly chopped beam measured on the scope is about 58 millivolts, and there is a phase shift of about 110 degrees relative to the chopper 1 reference output. We will use these values as sanity checks for our lock-in measurements. When I switch in the ND filter, there is an attenuation of the beam intensity by three orders of magnitude, and the 58 millivolt signal becomes 58 microvolts, which is too small to visualize on the scope. So let's bring the signal and reference over to the lock-in. I've connected Chopper 1's outer slots reference output to the lock-in reference input, making sure to set the reference source to external positive TTL and 1 megohm. The reference currently shows unlock as there's no signal present on the reference input until we start the Chopper 1 motor. The connection between Chopper 1 and Chopper 2 is unchanged so that Chopper 2 can be synchronized via its external sync input. Therefore, Chopper 1 remains the primary timekeeper with its frequency source set to internal and a set point frequency of 165 Hz. Chopper 2 keeps its source as external sync and we see that it is locked to the signal coming from the source out of Chopper 1. Finally, I've connected the photodiode output to the lock-in signal input A. Here's where my previous cheat is somewhat helpful. I know that with the ND filter in place, the previous 58 millivolt signal is attenuated to about 50 microvolts peak to peak at the lock-in's input, so I can configure the sensitivity and input range accordingly. You will have to sort these settings out for your own setup. Finally, I have the lock-in configured to demodulate at the first harmonic of the external reference signal, and I've zeroed the phase set point. The first step towards phase alignment of the choppers is establishing a baseline signal for the 50% duty cycle waveform of a singly chopped beam. This is done by measuring the photodiode output on the lock-in with only chopper 1 running and chopper 2 simply acting as a beam pass. I'll start chopper 1's motor, and we can see that the lock-in successfully locks to this reference. The unlock indicator is unlit and the external reference indicates 165 Hz as expected. I find it most useful to monitor X, Y, R, and theta on the lock-in front panel. In particular, R and theta will be used for the phase alignment procedure that follows. I also show R and theta on the strip chart history on the bottom. With the chopper 2 motor stopped and blocking the beam, there is no laser power reaching the photodiode and only measurement noise at the signal input. It can therefore be helpful to operate chopper 2 in shutter mode, that way you can be sure to find an orientation where it is not blocking the beam. To do so, set chopper 1's source to internal with a frequency set point of 0 Hz. When we start the motor, the motor orientation is indexed and then held at a fixed orientation of 0 degrees. Chopper 2's phase can now be adjusted to tune its static orientation and pass the beam. We can see that just as the beam passes an aperture edge, the signal appears on the lock-in. I'll go ahead and add 90 degrees to this set point to be sure that we are operating in the middle of an open aperture and not right at an edge. So long as your beam size is smaller than the aperture size, this adjustment should have no effect on the lock-in signal. With chopper 2 passing the beam, 
we now expect a 58 microvolt, 50% duty factor signal is coming into the lock-in. However, we see a magnitude of about 20 microvolts and a phase of 110 degrees. This is consistent with the phase of 110 degrees that we saw on the scope, but why are we measuring only 20 microvolts? We expect the ND30 filter to reduce the beam intensity at the photodiode by three orders of magnitude, thus reducing the output from 58 millivolts to 58 microvolts. The lock-in amplifier measures the RMS amplitude of the nth harmonic of the rectangular waveform. So there is a factor of 1 over square root 2 from the RMS and a factor of 2 over pi for the n equals 1 Fourier coefficient since we are measuring the n equals 1 harmonic with the lock-in. This works out to be about 0.45 times the peak-to-peak -peak square wave amplitude. That would be 26 microvolts, which is pretty close to what we see and likely within the tolerance of the ND filter. These are the baseline R and theta values for the singly chopped beam. Let's go ahead and press auto phase to consider this zero phase and any departures will now be easier to see. Next, we want to run chopper two in chop mode, synchronized to chopper one. So we power down the motor, reconfigure its source to external sync so that it follows chopper one. I'll reset the phase set point to zero so that we have a clean starting point and restart the motor. Once chopper 2 is stable and locked, we see a clear reduction in R and a change in theta. This is expected since chopper 2 has reduced the duty factor of the dual chopped beam below 50%. We want to adjust chopper 2's phase until we recover the values of R and theta that we saw for the singly chopped beam. This will indicate that the two choppers are properly phase aligned. It's probably easiest to watch theta using it as a null indicator and bring it back to zero. If you watched the last video, you saw that a phase setting of 51 degrees on chopper 2 was needed for phase alignment. That's consistent with what we see here, since I haven't changed the experimental setup at all, other than adding the ND filter. I'll go ahead and hit rel phase to consider this zero. And that's all there is to it. We've recovered a 50% duty cycle waveform for the dual chopped beam, and chopper 2's phase can now be used to tune the duty factor. You can calculate the duty factor using this formula and can use that to generate plots of signal magnitude versus duty factor, for example if you are searching for nonlinear effects in your sample. Note the factor of 2 between chopper 2's phase setting and the lock-in's measured phase. The app note linked below describes in more mathematical detail the relationship between R, theta, duty factor, and the chopper 2 phase. Check it out and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.